in today's lecture we will be discussing boolean functions we have already discussed in previous lectures boolean algebras but still to start with i will recall the definition of a boolean algebra we know that a boolean algebra is a lattice which is complemented distributive having at least two elements and also having a least element and a greatest element apart from that it has three basic operations one uh, called disjunction or 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 plus and the other being the conjunction the and or uh, product and the complementation operation now the probably this simplest boolean algebra consists of the set 0 1 with the operations defined as this one which is the or disjunction or simply we may call it plus and then another operation which is called and or conjunction which is denoted usually by a simply a dot or by juxtaposition of two elements which is defined as this and complementation which is simply this usually denoted by a prime and 0 prime is 1 and 1 prime is 0. Sometimes it is also called not. Now, as we have seen before that a boolean function uh, a, this boolean algebra uh, consisting of only 0 1 can be extended to b to the power n which is the Cartesian product of n copies of b and the operations uh, disjunction conjunction and complementation or or and not are defined as uh, as this or or plus consider two elements x bar and y bar inside B n. Therefore, x bar x bar is of this type x 1 
x 2 dot 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 x n belonging to b n and y bar is y 1 y 2 dot 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 y n belonging to b n x bar plus y bar is x 1 plus y 1 comma and so on up to x n plus y n. Now, this plus operation is same as the plus operation that we have defined before over b. Similarly, I can define and or just the dot as x bar and y bar equal to x 1 dot y 1 and so on up to x n y n. Not that is the complementation denoted by the simple symbol prime is x bar prime equal to x 1 up to x n prime which is again x 1 prime dot 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 x n prime. It is fairly easy to check that b n along with the operations just defined which are induced from the operations defined on b is a boolean algebra for any positive integer value of n. So, if we are very strict about that then we can write the boolean algebraic system involving b n as b n then this plus the dot the prime and of course, the least element which is the all 0 vector having n terms and the greatest element which is the all 1 vector having n terms combining all these things we have the boolean algebra b n. In the beginning it seems that this is a very restricted class of boolean algebras, but we can show uh, that any finite boolean algebra is essentially same as b n. We are not going into a theoretical proof of that or a, a theoretical uh, definition of what is called isomorphism of Boolean algebras, but we shall write the statement over here that any finite Boolean algebra is essentially same as b n for some positive integer value n. Now, we want to define functions over Boolean algebras. The first 
type of functions that we define and which are called Boolean functions are functions from B n to B. A function from B n to B is said to be a Boolean function. And that is what we are going to study today. Now, let us start with examples of Boolean functions. To start with Boolean functions are very simple. So, let us consider possibly one of the most simple examples of Boolean functions. Here we consider n to be equal to 2, then we can enumerate very easily all the points of B n that is B 2, those are 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1. we can list them in a table and since we are interested in a function from B 2 to B, we can write a rightmost column in the table some values from B. So, it can be just 1 0 1 0. So, suppose this column I am designating by the function f which is essentially the function that we are defining from B 2 to B. We can say that this function takes the value 1 when the input is 0 0, it takes the value 0 when the input is 0 1, it takes the value 1 when the input is 1 0 and it takes the value 0 when the input is 1 1. At this point, we define something else we define what we call a Boolean variable. So, a symbol x is called a Boolean variable if it can take the values 0 or 1. So, we are essentially defining variables what the set B. a symbol x is said to be a Boolean variable if x can take values from 
B which is essentially the set containing 0 and 1. Now, we look again at the table uh, that we have already discussed in the context of the function f. The each coordinate point of B 2 can be assigned to a Boolean variable. So, we, we rewrite the same table like this, we assign the Boolean variable x 1 to the leftmost coordinate and x 2 to the rightmost coordinate. So, we get the values like this 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and now the function f can be thought of as a function on x 1 and x 2 and its values are 0 1 1 0. A table like this for a Boolean function is said to be its truth table. It is of course, obvious that if we have a function from b to the power n to b for any positive integer value of n, then we will be able to write the truth table of that function. At this point, it is uh, worthwhile to uh, uh, to check the ordering in which we write the values of the vectors of B n. So, we look at B 3 suppose x 1, x 2, x 3 are the Boolean variable corresponding to the coordinates of the vectors in B 3, then we will write the values uh, in this order. First, we will write the all 0 vector, then we will write 0 0 1, then we will write 0 1 0 and lastly, we will write 0 1 1 and then we will write 1 0 0, then 1 0 1, then 1 1 0, 1 1 1. In what follows, we will always write the table in this order. This has a very useful connection to decimal numbers. What we can do is that we can say that each of these vectors or strings or elements can be related to a number which is given by x 1 plus 2 times x 2 plus 2 square times x 3. Now, let us evaluate each and every point when it is 0 then of course, the result is 0 when it is only 1 the result is 1, but when it is 0 1 0 then it is 2 when it is 0 1 1 now let us check when x 3 is 0. So, that is 2 square into 0, then x 2 is 1 that is 2 into 1 plus x 1 is 1 that is 1. So, this gives me 3. So, this is 3. Then the next one is 
2 square into 1 plus 2 into 0 plus 0 which is equal to 4. St continuing in this way we will see that the rest of the elements correspond to the decimal numbers 5, 6 and 7. So, this is something that we will be calling a decimal code. Now, of course, we can extend this and go to a situation when there are n boolean variables. So, B n is typically the set consisting of x 1 and so on up to x n, where x i belongs to B for all i belonging to 1 2 so on up to n. Now, we will be writing the elements of B n in the order which is exactly the extension of what we have seen before. So, the first one will be all 0. So, the decimal coding will be 0, then it will be all 0 and 1. So, the decimal coding will be 1, then it will be all 0 and 1 0. So, the decimal code will be 2 and then all 0 and 1 1. So, the decimal code will be 3. It will go on in this way and eventually we will have the pattern which consists of only all 1 and this is in decimal code it will be 2 to the power n minus 1. And if we see carefully this will give us all the positive integers from 0 1 2 2 to, to the power n minus 1. We will be using this ordering always in this in these lectures and uh, otherwise also in the theory of Boolean functions and Boolean algebra this ordering is predominantly used. Now, what we realize coming to this point is that we can talk about something called Boolean expressions. A Boolean expression is any formula that we can build up by using Boolean variables plus dot and complement that is uh, Boolean variables or and and complement or conjunction, disjunction and complementation. So, for example, we can suppose we fix the number of Boolean variables to be 3. So, we are considering here x 1, x 2 and x 3 only, we can build up any expression. Let us call one expression like this as g x 1, x 2, x 3 which is equal to possibly x 1, x 2 complement plus x 3 uh, well plus x 2. Now, what we can do is that we can put as inputs the values of x 1, x 2, x 3 from the Boolean algebra B 3 and see what happens. Let us try that now. 
So, I write x 1 then x 2 and x 3 I put 0 0 0 then the next entry is 0 0 1 the next is 0 1 0 the fourth one is 0 1 1 fifth one is 1 0 0 then 1 0 1 then 1 1 0 and then 1 1 1. So, I have got all the 8 entries over here and I will put the inputs in G according to that the first one is 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, here x 1 is 0 x 2 is 0 complement. So, 1 plus x 3 is 0 and x 2 is 0. So, it is 0. So, I will write it over here. So, I am designating the right hand column as the function g. Then let us consider g of now x 1 is 1 rest are zeros. Now, x 1 is 1 and see here x 2 is 0. So, 0 complement is 1 therefore, I have 1 over here plus x 3 is 0 and x 2 is 0. Now, this gives me 1. So, I write 1 over here and the third one is 0 1 0 here x 1 is 0 then x 2 complement is also 0 then x 3 is 0 and x 2 in this case x 2 is 1 therefore, again I will get 1. So, I write 1 over here. Now, we come to the fourth one that is 0 1 1 remember that we are starting from this way onward. So, x 1 is 0 x 2 is 1 complement. So, it is 0 then x 3 is 1 then x 2 is 1. So, I again get 1 I write 1 over here then I have 1 0 0. So, x 1 remembering that I am x 1 to x 3 is in this direction. So, x 1 is 1 x 2 is 0 complement. So, it is 1 then x 3 and x 2 both are 0. So, I get 1 I write over here then see g 1 0 1. So, it is x 1 is 1 x 2 complement is 1 then x 3 is 1 x 2 is 0 this also is 1 and then g 1 1 0 is x 1 is 1 x 2 complement is 0 then x 3 is 0 then x 2 is 1 this is again 1 and g 1 1 1 we get x 1 is 1 x 2 complement is 0 x 3 is 1 and x 2 is 1. So, again I have got 1. So, I get a pattern uh, like the 1 I have got in the right hand side, but this is a truth table of a Boolean function. Therefore, what we have seen is that if we have a boolean expression then we have a boolean function. If we have a boolean expression consisting of n boolean variables
then it corresponds to a Boolean function from B n to B and of course, this function is unique. So, we see that a Boolean expression corresponds to a Boolean function. Now, the question is the other way around. If we have a Boolean function, can we construct a Boolean expression? The answer is yes and we will see an example how it works. So, we now consider our small Boolean algebra B 2. So, not B n, but just B 2 and we write down an arbitrary truth table involving B 2. Suppose x 1 is again the left most variable and x 2 is the next variable. So, the input values are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and let us consider the function 0 1 0 1 let us call it f. Our goal is to find out a Boolean expression corresponding to this function. So, I write here our goal is to find out a Boolean expression corresponding to f. What we do here is a very standard trick we extend the table a little bit here again I have got x 1 and x 2 I write the input values and this is my function f. So, this is 0 1 0 1 I write some so called sub functions may be yeah. So, these are f 1 and f 2 So, what I have done over here is that for each one 
in the truth table of the function f I have constructed a function. So, for this one I have a function f 1 for the next one I have a function f 2 and if we take f 1 plus f 2 then we will see that we will arrive at the function f because f 1 plus f 2 the first row is 0 the second one is 1 then 0 and then 1. It is of course, clear to us that f is equal to f 1 plus f 2. Now, the question is that can we find out an expression for f 1 and f 2 if we can do that then we have a an expression for f. To do that, we concentrate on the function f 1, we see that f 1 is a function which is 1 at only this input point and otherwise it is 0. The question is that how can we do that and a simple observation shows that f 1 is nothing but x 1 and x 2 complement. What I am doing over here is that I am checking the point at which f 1 is 1. At that point I am checking the corresponding Boolean variables. We see that corresponding to x 1 the component value is 1 therefore, x 1 is kept as it is. I see that corresponding to x 0 the component value is 0 therefore, I take x 2 complement. Now, if I give the input 0 1 to this function say f 1 I put x 1 equal to 0, I am sorry I put here x 1 equal to 1. So, I have got x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0. This gives me 1 dot 0 complement that is 1 dot 1 this is equal to 1. So, at least I know that this expression that I have written this expression evaluates to 1 at the point x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0. Now, if we scan all the other points we will see that this pattern will never match. Therefore, in other places either x 1 will be 0 in that case f 1 will be 0 or x 2 will be 1 in that case uh, x 2 complement will be 0. For example, if I evaluate the same function f 1 at let us say x 1 equal to 0 and x 2 equal to 1 this will evaluate to 0 dot 1 complement which is 0 dot 0 which gives me 0. We can check that this is going to happen in all the other input points. Now, so what is the rule of getting these functions? These functions which we may call component functions of f or at this point or whatever these functions are 1 only in one input points and 0 in all the other input points. So, check that pattern and wherever the Boolean variable corresponding Boolean variable values are 1 keep the variables intact 
corresponding to the other entries just take the complement of those variables take the product of them and get a essentially a product term of some boolean variables and their complements. Now, in the same way we can get the expression for f 2 which is f 2 x 1 x 2. Now, please see that f 2 is 1 only at the input point 1 1 and so all the boolean variables are 1 over here. So, I will simply write this is x 1 x 2 and as we have seen if we take or or plus of these two columns we get back our function f. So, we can write f 1 x 1 x 2 equal to x 1 x 2 complement x 1 plus x 1 x 2. we do not write the 1 here because this is the whole function f. So, we see that f is x 1 x 2 complement plus x 1 x 2. We can evaluate this function here and check that it is indeed so. So, let us take the first point when both are zeros, then x 1 equal to 0 x 2 equal to 1 and x 1 0. So, I get 0 then when x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0 then this is 1 and this is 1. So, I get 1 over here when x 2 equal to 1 and x 1 equal to 0 then this is evaluated to 0 and this is also evaluated to 0. So, I get 0 over here and when both are 1 then this is 1 therefore, I will get 1 over here. So, we see that the expression that we have got matches with the boolean function. This example more or less convinces us that we can get a boolean expression for any boolean function on any number of variables. The basic rule is same just decompose the function into functions having 1 at only one place and correspondingly uh, write the product terms and add them up at the end. Here what we see is that we are getting the boolean expression in the form which can be uh, expressed as sum of products. Indeed, we sometimes call these, these expressions as sum of products. We also see a salient point over here that is each product term contains all the variables. So, we come to a, a definition which is called mean term. a product term which contains each variable
in their complemented or uncomplemented form is called a mean term. Similarly, we define something called max terms which we will be discussing shortly. So, I will define them in the same go. A max term is a sum term which contains each variable in their complemented or uncomplemented form is called a max term. What we have seen just now is that the function f x 1 x 2 is x 1 x 2 complement plus x 1 x 2. Here the salient point of this expression is that this is 2 salient point of this expression is that it is sum of mean terms. This function f is from b 2 to b. So, only two variables are involved and among these two variables both the variables are involved in all the product terms whose sums we are taking. So, these are mean terms and we are summing the mean terms to get the expression of the function and if such is the case then this expression is called a conjunctive normal for I am sorry a disjunctive normal form. So, this is called a disjunctive normal form. or in terms d n f. I repeat again, if a Boolean expression is written as sum of mean terms, then it is said to be a disjunctive normal form of the corresponding Boolean function. Now, we will soon see that we can write a function as a product of sum terms uh, that is product of max terms in particular and that will be called conjunctive 
normal form or C n f. To do that we will take up again the same function that we have discussed just before and try to find its conjunctive normal form or in other words try to write a boolean expression which is product of max terms. So, we look at the truth table again and we have 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1. Now, what we do is that we now try to locate the zeros. So, we have now a function g 1 which is 0 in the first place and 1 in all the other places and a function g 2 which is 0 in the third place and 1 in all the other places. We will show that g 1 and g 2 can be written as sum of the Boolean variables which are involved in this Boolean algebra and if we take the product of g 1 and g 2 that is and of g 1 and g 2 then we will get 0, 1, 0 and 1 which is nothing but our original function f. Now, the question is how to get that. So, our rule is as follows we have g 1 we write x 1 x 2 we want it to be 0 when the input is 0 0. In order to do that, I will just write x 1 plus x 2, because this expression is 0 when both x 1, x 2 are 0, but if anything else happens then it is not 0 and it is in fact 1. Similarly, we concentrate on this input vector which is gives me the value this. So, it is g 2 x 1 x 2 and this g 2 x 1 x 2 is going to be 0 if I put uh, well as x 1 intact because anyway x 1 s value is 0 over here and instead of x 2 I put x 2 complement. Please check that these two are the functions that we need and the rule is very clear that we have only in one input value that we have to consider check each component if the component value is 0 just write the corresponding uh, boolean variable in the sum if it is 1 write its complement. If you do that you will get exactly the function you need and then f x 1 x 2 is g 1 x 1 x 2 dot g 2 x 1 x 2 that is equal to x 1 plus x 2 uh, dot x 1 plus x 2 complement and this is what is called the conjunctive normal form of the function f. Conjunctive
in so in short cnf of the boolean function f thus we have seen two very important normal forms of boolean functions now we will move on to another useful form which is of course very difficult to write when the function is uh, large but when the function is not on a very large space we can write that and this relates to the decimal codes that we have discussed before. We will check this way of representation by an example. So, we have an example on a function from v 3 to b and let me write down all the uh, all the points of B 3 along with the decimal coding. Now, we write the variables as x 1, x 2 and x 3 as before. So, I write 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 and now I write the decimal code which is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and suppose my boolean function f is something like this 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 0. What I can do is that I can simply write this function with a summation notation and put within bracket all the points at which the function is 1. So, it is 1 at 1. So, I write 1 over here and then it is 1 at 3. So, I write 3 over here, 1 at 4, I write 4 over here, 1 at 5, I write 5 over here. Of course, this representation may not be convenient if the boolean function is on a large number of variables, but for a small number of variables it is going to be con convenient and a very uh, common problem is, is to write the CNF or the DNF of a function which is given in this way and this is what I would uh, like to propose as an exercise to you. So, in this lecture we have discussed one Boolean functions Two truth table then we have discussed Boolean variables.
and Boolean expressions. We have discussed decimal coding. and representation of Boolean functions. And finally, the most important uh, fact of Boolean functions is D n f and C n f that is disjunctive normal forms and conjunctive normal forms and their interrelations. This is for today. Thank you.